Welcome to another moment in the Word. Do you feel hopeless? Do you feel that you've exhausted all of your remedies and all of the possibilities of making your circumstances better? Do you feel that not only are you hopeless, but that you're helpless, there is no one to come to your aid? Well, that's precisely the situation we find ourselves in. As we look at this passage, it's in Matthew chapter 9. We're looking at verses 20 down to verse 22. It's the woman who touches the hem of our Lord's garment. And here's what it says. And behold, a woman who had been diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I but touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned about. And when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good cheer. Be comforted. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. Well, as we look at the context once again, we had been at Jared's house, and he had been the one who was the ruler of the synagogue, and he had a 12-year-old daughter who had been sick, sick unto death. In fact, it is just after this incident with the woman who touches the hem of our Lord's garment that they say to him, Jairus, don't bother the master, your daughter has already died. And so Jesus is making his way, following Jairus to his house to then come to the aid of his daughter while there's a great crowd, a great multitude that has come around him and they're pressing in on him. And so consequently, this is the circumstance in which we find now another interruption. Sometimes you're in the middle of ministry, and while you're ministering, something else happens, and then something else, and that's precisely what had happened. We had had that Matthew is the one whom Jesus said, follow me, and so there was a banquet immediately after that. And then there's the interruption of the disciples of John who asked the question, hey, should we fast? And so it's right after that we end up with Jairus' Uh, circumstance, and then this interruption. Life is filled with interruptions, isn't it? But consider the interruptions divine appointments. Consider them as the circumstances in which God has the opportunity to show himself glorious, and you have the opportunity to wait on him. Oftentimes, we have our agenda, but God has his, and that we sometimes have to modify. In fact, I would argue we're always adjusting our time to meet his. That's when you know God is involved in your life because you see him not only doing miracles, but also doing miracles in just the right time. Okay, so as we see that, we see again the word Behold, it's Kai Adon in the Greek. It is A and an behold. And the behold means to look physically, but also to look with insight. Look beyond what you see. And so consequently, we see a woman. And the word gyne is the Greek word. It is the word from which you get your English word gynecology. So it's really interesting how this fits. And then he we read that Matthew writes that she had a discharge or a disease of blood. It was a menstrual cycle that had gone well beyond what is considered normal. Normal may be three or four days, but in this case, it was beyond that. And when that happens, there is something that the Jewish law required that changed everything. In fact, we find it mentioned in the book of Leviticus, and it's in chapter 15, and we find it mentioned in verses 19 and then down to verse 25. But here's what it says. A woman who has an issue, if her issue is an issue of blood, whosoever touches her shall be unclean even into that evening. So if it was during the normal time, of her period, if you touched her, you would be unclean. And if that went beyond, verse 25, if a woman has an issue of blood many days out of the time of her separation, the normal time of her menstrual cycle, and if it run beyond that, all the days of the issue of her uncleanness shall be the days of her separation. Separation 
from the synagogue, separation from the temple, separation from the community, separation even from her husband. So now picture this woman has been 12 years in a situation in which she is isolated. So now she's unclean ceremonially. She can't worship. She can't pray in the temple. She can't learn in the synagogue. She can't be in the fellowship of the other saints. And she is totally isolated. Put yourself in her shoes. Or maybe you don't have to do that. Maybe you can relate with her. Maybe you feel that way in your own life, that you find yourself on the outside and you're not connected to anyone. And therefore, you find yourself in a very desperate place. Now, I want you to also see that not only was she unclean and isolated, but she was also bankrupt. And if you look at Matt, Mark's gospel, and, and he describes the situation quite well, it says in Mark chapter 5 that there was a verse, um, oh boy, where is it? Here it is, verse 33, that the woman had... Um, many physicians that she had gone to, and she had spent all that she had, and that she was no better, but in fact that she was worse. Maybe that's been your experience. Maybe you had a physical condition, and the physical condition cost you everything that you had. And then we find in verse 27, and when she heard that Jesus had healed others, she then realized that Jesus was more than just a man, and she wants then to have some relationship, some contact, some connection with him. And so she said, if only I can touch the hem of his garment. So what we had seen here in Mark's gospel is the situation of her desperation, but just how she had gone to the extreme of finding help, and there was none. Now we see also that she had said, within herself. And the word within herself is that she never said anything. Nobody heard her cry out, Master. It wasn't like the leper who had said, have mercy on me. She's just speaking within herself. When you pray and you're praying silently, does God hear your prayers? And the answer is absolutely yes. That's a wonder. God knows your thoughts. He knows your thoughts are far off. He knows you're down sitting, you're uprising, the hairs on your head. He knows you before you were conceived. He knows you from the foundation of the world. He knows all about you. And so consequently, she is thinking within herself, but God knows her thoughts. Jesus knows her thoughts because Jesus is God. Jesus is God who has become man in order that we might know what God is like. And what is God like? God knows us, and we see it here. God cares about us, and that we see here. God is able to adjust and to ad address the circumstances that are beyond us, and we see that here. And so she says within herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, the word if it is not what we call in the Greek a subjunctive, and that means a hypothetical, a possibility. Oh, no, no, no. What this is here is a conjunction. It's a connection, and it's saying that if I touch him, and now notice the then, then I shall be well. And that is in the uh, future passive indicative tense. In other words, that will happen it's in the indicative, it is a definite, passive, it will happen to me. So it's real interesting. In the Greek, things get really precise, but that helps us a whole lot in our faith. And so we see that she's determining that if she trusts God, that he will make the difference in her life. Is that your circumstances. That would you believe? Do you believe that even though no one else has been able to help you, even though you've been cut off from your community, even though you find yourself destitute, even though you find yourself in a condition that it's gone on for a long period of time, 12 years for her, that you haven't given up, you're still trusting God? And so that's what we find with her. And so we find her 
that she comes and she comes from behind. Now, why did she come from behind? Was it because she was afraid? She was afraid what other people thought? Well, we know that she was following. She's not crawling on her knees all the way behind Jesus. Instead, she had been following him. But when she follows him and she's right up behind him, she doesn't tap him on the shoulder. No, 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 no. She wants just simply to touch his garment. She's convinced he has such power that his very presence will make a difference in her life. And so consequently, she falls down and she is prostrate and she is in effect worshiping and she's holding out her hand and she's holding out her hand to touch the hem of his garment. And so my conviction is that she is humble. It's not that she is afraid. It's that she is humble. And that's what God looks for, a broken and contrite spirit, one that trembles at his word, one who is a meek and humble spirit. And that also is what we need in our own lives, isn't it? We need to be humble before him. And so she then touches the hem of his garment. What is the hem of his garment? Well, Jewish men wore robes, but at the base of the robe, there would be fringes because that was also required in the book of Deuteronomy that there would be fringe. And the fringe was always to remind the Jewish men as they would put this on, this is the prayer shawl, and they would put this on, and this is called a tzitzi. And this is where the, the word zitzi simply means to be knotted. And you will note that there is a precise manner in which this is done, but it's to recall the commandments of the Lord. The power is in the word of God. The prayers that we pray are based on the word of God. If we are just simply demanding from God our will, there is no power in that. The power is that I am praying in the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is that I am praying to him in his name, in his behalf, with power of attorney. In other words, based on what he wills and that he has promised and his promises are yea and amen. So consequently, I can pray trusting him, knowing that he provides. And that's exactly what she does. She is determined that if she but touches the hem, the fringe the prayer life of our Lord, the place where the word of God and the intercession of God meet. There is nothing more powerful in your life than your prayer life. If God can meet you there and you meet God there, then the devil has no power over you. And if your prayer life is one that is absent, then Satan will defeat you easily. And you'll be overcome with discouragement and doubts in this world. This woman has no doubts, even though she's had 12 years of this insidious ongoing affliction. But now she touches the hem of his garment and She's convinced she shall be well. What's the word for well? This is an interesting word. The word is sozo. The word means to be saved, to be made whole, because that's what salvation is. Salvation is the broken being mended. It is that which is separated being united. It is that which was once be, being uh, uh, broken entirely by sin, made holy by the blood of Christ. And so consequently, we see that. And now we find in verse 22, Jesus, he turns around. What does the name Jesus mean? Jesus is the word in the Greek. Ye Yeshua is the, the name in, in Hebrew. They all mean the same thing. It means Savior. She's convinced she will be saved. She's talking to the right one because this is God who became man and that Jesus shall be called Jesus, said uh, uh, the, the uh, angel, the archangel Gamaliel, because, uh, Gabriel, because he will save his people from their sins. So he turns and we'll find in the other gospels that he asks a question and he asks, who touched me? Well, why in the world would he who is God, 
who knows all things, is omniscient. Why would he say, who touched me? Did he not know? No, it's the same reason why God in the garden looks for Adam and says, where are you? Does God not know where Adam is? Of course he knows. And he knows where you are. And he knows your problems right now. He is looking to see if we will identify ourselves to him. That was why he tested Abraham. He didn't test Abraham because he didn't know if Abraham trusted him or not. He wanted Abraham to know that he trusted God. And the same thing is here. And so he waits. And this is where Peter then responds and says, Lord, there's a great crowd here. They're pressing in from all sides. It could be anybody. But Jesus knows And he says, no, somebody touched me. I felt power, dunamis, power go out from me. And then this woman confesses, and she tells him the truth. She tells him all things about what had happened and why. And that's when Jesus says to her, daughter, daughter, daughter of the covenant, a child of God, daughter, be of good comfort, In the Greek, the word isn't comfort, though. The word is the word you get your word cardiac from. The word means heart. Be of good heart. Be not discouraged, but be encouraged. Have heart. And where does that heart come from? The strength within you comes from a relationship with God. And so he says, be of comfort. And why? Because your faith has made you whole. Well, same word that she was saying before. I know if I but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made well. And it is that. It's Jesus that makes us well. And thereby, we connect with Jesus by faith. Now, can you identify with this woman? Well, I pray so, because in many ways, all of us are just like this woman. We have an issue with blood too, don't we? Yes, the wages of sin is death. And the problem is, from Adam on, we have all been born without a relationship with God, and thereby we need to be born again. We are just like her. We have no remedy apart from Jesus. We're in a desperate state. We need his touch. We need to hear his word. And even if you're alone right now, and even if you're only saying within yourself, Lord, save me, then you know he will, and he will bring you to wholeness. Let's pray. Thank you so much, Father, for this incident, this record, this account in our Lord's life of a desperate person that needed so much your touch. But thank you, Father, that she's not alone, that we also have been just like her, touched by the Master. And we have been made whole, made whole by his blood and our faith by trusting in him. And thank you, Father, you've given us even the ability to even believe and to trust you. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen.